Andy Clare, James Hurd and Michael Boss, the joint winners for the 1996 Brownlow medal. Brisbane's first Brownlow medalist. 300 games to the skipper, Roger Merritt. A groundbreaking win over the West Coast Eagles. Record winning streaks. Ground level Lambert. And for the first time in its 10 year history, the Bears would win in the AFL finals. Not once, but twice. 1996. A year to remember. The mark. The ball spills wide. The aptly titled Lightning Premiership put the new look bears of new coach John Northey on show for the first time on a wintry weekend in February. In the finish, it's into the pocket, taken by Trask. Trask and a snapshot for goal. That is a magnificent effort. It's a goal. Soccer's off the ground. Turner tried to pick it up. His hand pass was smothered. It comes back to Trask, who pulls away nicely. He's already kicked one goal. He runs inside the 50, draws a man. The hand pass not particularly good, but Lappin able to take it, turn around and kick a goal. Wasting no time. He kicks towards Harford. Well weighted kick too. This is Robbins. Delisted by the Eagles to Ackermanis on the overlap. Probing kick inside the 50. And Lepich sneaking away has taken this mark about 25 metres out from goal. Justin Lepich. Important kick this one if the Bears are to go on in this competition. He's judged it very well. That's a lovely kick. It's a goal. The centenary celebrations of the AFL had a damp kick off at Waverley. As in quick succession, the Bears disposed of the reigning day premiers Carlton, eventual night premier St Kilda and Collingwood before coming up against Essendon in the final. Here's Lappin, got it from Dick Foss. That's a magnificent kick. Go to the Bears. That was a very good grab under the circumstances too. James Hurd kicks it down towards Harford. It pitches just outside the 50, runs on. Here's a chance for Cockatoo. Collins touches it. In the modified competition, the Bombers kick straighter. 6-2 against two goals nine to win by 17 points. Important goal. Comes towards Harford. And Bartlett kicks towards the 50. And here's Alistair Lynch. Used his body well or his arm. Gee, that's a great start, isn't it? My oh, word, it is. The opening game of the season proper saw Brisbane at its most awesome. Footscray made the trip north with little form on the board. The Bulldogs took a belting. Going to be kicking Don from just outside 50 with a drop punt. He's a lovely looking drop punt. Welcome back, Alistair Lynch. Wow. May get there in time. What can the big man do? He does it well. Swings round now, wobbles one back in towards inside 50. Ashcroft takes it from Lambert. Marcus Ashcroft oh. it back and has kicked a beautiful goal. Oh. Croft in trouble. Look at the hand pass of White. Beautifully done to Hart, who fires away at goal. And there's the quick reply. Goes out wide to Hart, spins onto his left foot, then back inside. Oh, clever play to champion. Champion just lost it for a second. Now can kick from 55 kick metres. Goal. Goes long and has kicked the goal. Uh, the fullback. The old war horse Roger Merritt stands oh. his ground. Look at White get White, up on the Unbelievable, isn't it? Just incredible talent. Speaking of that, oh. look at this. Welcome to the Daryl White Show. And he's given another one away to Alistair Lynch. But this bear side's been irrepressible they've really kept at it tonight it's been a pretty impressive way they've gone about this to Voss no. free kick heard the whistle oh, Voss has kicked the play. goal oh. by the advantage that is magnificent oh that is a great goal quick kick from Hart great snap Sean Hart 
Sean Hart kicked five goals, the best by any bear against the Bulldogs. Matthew Clark gave notice of a great season to come. Brisbane by 87 points, a record margin by the Bears against the Doggies. The man who would win three votes from the umpires that day, Michael Voss, begins his look at the season. Yeah, well, it was obviously a very good start. Um, Matthew Clark showed his promise. He was uh, fantastic in the ruck fours, really dominated the game. Um, I think all the young players really started to come through. You could start to see the emergence and how far they'd come over the past year. The Bears, On the Brownlow medal, I didn't expect to get three or probably maybe two or something Maryland like that because I thought Matthew Clark played such a fabulous game. We had such a bad start to the season in previous seasons and it's just so important that we um, got a way to a good start and we really emphasised that pre-season because we really needed it. for the wily old veteran, but no, he says, I'll do that. Piece of cake. And he does. In a decade in the AFL, the Bears had beaten every team bar one, the West Coast Eagles. A draw at Carrara in 1992, the closest in 14 previous meetings. They had never won in Perth, despite desperate planning. For the Brisbane Bears, but it's sucking up the ground for the first goal of the night. Great start for the Brisbane Bears and Alistair Lynch as he continues on again and Clark sends them down to half forward once more. Merritt in front and has accepted that mark. McIntosh behind, the leading goal kicker at the Bears and also leading games tally, comes in from 30 metres out and has kicked the Bears second. Score this quarter. Right. Many of the Bears hierarchy regard this match on the night of Saturday, April 6, as the turning point of the Brisbane season. Brisbane staged a first quarter blitz. They had four goals on the board before the Eagles struck back. 35 out kicks. I'm sure he's kicked his second, and that's the answer. The Bears fifth. Plus one on one drill here. Lynch in front, trying to tap it to his own advantage. There's Blurt. Had it knocked from him. McIntosh. Oh, great handball to White. Fantastic tackle from Lynch. Great pressure here from all players. White snaps and a great oh. goal. He gives it back to Dick Poss, who looks down towards its centre wing. Good strong mark taken by Fletcher. He's been sensational. Adrian Fletcher's going to put them inside 50. Can the Bears oh, answer? Oh. Daryl White, the magician! What oh. a game! What a game! Sets up a handle, 25 metres. Bartlett to Fletcher. Gives it off to Lappin. And Lappin's away running. Two bounces. Yeah. Now being chased by Donnelly. Puts in a bit of a spurt and kicks the ball wobbly forward. Falls to Lepage, turns, chips, can't find Lynch. Lynch goes to ground, backing up his heart. They can work something out here, the Bears. Lovell has to wait. Here comes Lepage over the top. Off the oh. ground, goal! Incredible. Incredible. Seconds ticking away. He might fancy himself with a chance here, but he's going to be kicking from 48 metres gone for distance but it's gone right there's a sensational mark though and i don't look have a guess arguably one of the most exciting players in the competition when he's firing daryl white from 15 meters just a steady little pop shot at goal and he's made no mistake about it can the eagles get another? on a night when the eagles were hit with crucial injuries brisbane answered every challenge worst fold would miss the remainder of the season with a knee McKenna would be sidelined for a month too. Oh, what rotten luck. It is Guy McKenna. Oh, man. It was a game that impressed Mick Malthouse. He rated the Bears one of the four best teams in the competition. In the end, the Bears by 25 points, with Clark the three-vote getter. And Voss picking up two more. Oh. It's goal! I think he shipped this route. Great play. Yeah, I'd have to say that was probably our best performance for the year. It was, um, you know... West Coast were just beating Fremantle and are such a formidable side. We'd never beaten them before and there was no better place than beat them over on their home ground. Um, you know, we come up against these sides now and we believe that uh, any place in Australia, we can beat these teams. He's running towards 50. From 55, he looks towards Lepich. If you want to seal it, then this could be it. Played in the Hawthorne under-19s tour, their eyes squad. The shot from Justin Lepich looks pretty good. The Bears are home here at the Wacker.
2,000 people were turned away for the emotional showdown between Robert Walters Richmond and the Northie coach Bears. The two coaches who'd swapped jobs at the conclusion of the 95 season had the town abuzz. For the first time at the New Look Gabba, there was a sellout. And in game number 200 for the Bears, the crowd got a thrilling first term. Robert Wall's record, well, John Northey took Richmond from 14th back in 1993 to 4th in 1995. So both have uh, seen their clubs rise. Here's a chance for Matthew Rogers. Rogers in towards Benny Gale. He couldn't quite take the mark. The Duck shoots the goal. And there's the first one to the Tigers. And the home side needing this. It's been Richmond's quarter to date. But he's got his first. Off to Lappin. Chips Lynch. Now plays on. Kicks. Comes back inside. Onto his left foot. Chips to the front of the square. Scott is confronted. Players go to ground. The Lepic swings it round. And finally the Bears have got one. Runs hard. The second it. quarter though was a fizzer. The Bears throwing away their chances as Richmond outscored them five goals to nil. After that disappointing period, Brisbane settled in. In the second half, Brisbane scored ten goals to seven. It wasn't enough. The Bears producing the first of only two home ground losses for the season. Arrow White kicks and kicks a much needed goal for the Bears. We were quite disappointing that game. I thought we only lost by 18 points, yet I think we deserved to probably lose by about 40 or 50. We played that bad. During the week that followed, the AFL centenary celebrations went into full swing. A dinner for 3,200 at the MCG under the biggest marquee seen in the Southern Hemisphere. In the stands where fans have watched their heroes play for a hundred years, fireworks lit up the Melbourne sky. It's a great uh, Australian occasion and it's appropriate that it be held in uh, the greatest sporting arena in Australia. Inside the largest marquee ever assembled in Australia, the guests were provided with plenty of culinary delights, smoked salmon, chicken, beef and champagne for their $500 tickets. Our boys who play this grand old game are always striving for glory and fame. The AFL promises the hallowed MCG turf will be restored to its pristine condition by Anzac Day. This glittering affair is expected to last into the early hours of the morning, giving the AFL a birthday it will surely remember for at least the next hundred years. The celebrations continued under the Gabba lights on Friday night. North Melbourne in town. Alistair Lynch kicked early goals for the Bears as North slipped slightly ahead. It was a welcome return for Lynch after his successful fight back against the debilitating chronic fatigue syndrome. And a free kick is going to Brisbane. Is the advantage going to be paid? Yes. They get the ball to full forward. A good lead. A brilliant kick. The chance to kick his second goal. He's kicking from uh, about 45 metres out. It's close. The goal umpire indicating a goal. Kicks it in the direction of champion. He marks. He's got McAdam running in support, but he ignores him and then goes straight towards full forward. He's got it again. Justin Lepic. And he looks as, as though he means business. Two goals so far. He hasn't been on the ground all that long. Kicking from 50 metres. Gets terrific distance. It's a magnificent kick. It's his third goal. High kick by Scott. Short pass. Looks for Lepic. G's playing fierce. Dion Scott goes in. Kicks across his body. Oh, can this goal umpire pick this? I'd say it's a goal. Have a look at it. It's there. Dion Scott. Lepic does well. Hart. Kick smothered off the boot. Archer. Daryl White to the square. Lepic. Has he kicked his fourth? He may have. He has. Laidley short danger. Clark at the back. Well done by Fairley. Clark probably should have done better. Lapman pushes it to Lambert. Lambert could finish it off. It looks good. It's there. Bears back in business. Should have been a free kick to the Bears. Lambert out wide. Gets to Kennedy. Now straightens the body. Goes long to full forward. Lepic, big fly. Short heart round the body. Akamano's goal. Clark.
Clark gets it to Kennedy. Kennedy's kick to the goal square. Not quite. Lippich. Sean Hart unselfishly gives it to White, and White's got the goal. Three points the margin. Champions kick is not bad. A little bit of misunderstanding here between Ashcroft and Lappin. But that Lappin takes it from Ashcroft into the pocket. It's beautifully weighted, and it's been marked by Fletcher. In the words of one of, our, one of our fellow commentators, centimetre perfect. Fletcher from the boundary line. Kicks. Close. It's a mark or a goal. It's a, it's a goal, I'd say. Hey, Chapman off the ground. Lappin hard at it. They missed it. Now hard. That's a good gift to Lappin. Enter Justin Lepich. A career best six goals sank north. To the pocket. Lepich back there. Oh, what a take. Plays on. And kicks his fifth. Advantage paid. Chris Scott, Akamanis in trouble. Quickly Down by a kick at half time, the Bears were five points up at the last change. And then cruised away to a 30 point win in the final turn. Voss, best of field again. Quite memorable that win. We had a, another packed house, I think, and, um, you know, north of the glamour side of the competition, as we all know now. And um, we, we were pretty built up for that, and the crowd pumped us up, got behind us, and. The team seemed to lift it. I knew that we wouldn't play the same as what we get it, did against Richmond. Um, it was only a matter of time before we sort of got ourselves on track and uh, we showed that uh, we could still match it with the best. Certainly will end North Melbourne's chances. Akamanis goes in and gets his second. Fitzroy's last visit to the Gabba in their own entity was a one-sided rump for the Bears. An eight-goal second term blew the game wide open, and from then on, Brisbane was untroubled. Inside 50, quick snap. It's a great snap by Marcus Ashcroft, and he's kicked it. Lambert. Now Fletcher. Beautifully directed kick right into the chest of Justin Lippich. Directly in front of goal. 35 metres up, he kicks, and he goals. Two goals to the Bears early in the first quarter. Gives it across to Fletcher, inside 50, looking for Merritt, and he's got it. Three goals so far this season, 414 in his great career. He's right on 50, and he has drilled it. Goes over the top here to Lappin. He wants to draw an opponent. Scott says kick it long. He grubs it along the ground. Lepic, a great pickup. Screws it around for White. He needs a kind bounce. He'll kick a goal. Fantastic play. Detroit 3-5, the Bears 5-3. So the difference back to 10 points at the Gabba. Lambert out of the congestion in the middle. Picks up towards full forward. In numbers, the Bears. Merritt goes at goal. That's the quickest of possible replies by the veteran, and he puts it through. Scott plays on. Doesn't get too much distance with the kick. White underneath it. Atkins couldn't take it likewise. Paddled further forward by Johnson. Now Ron Bottas. Intercepting down there is Michael Boss. He goes at goal this time. Oh! <laughs> it was an off break. It came back about six feet. And a goal. So the Bears lead 58 to 32. Long bomb inside 50. Kicked off the ground by White. Back to Lapp and oh, wonderful evasive skills onto the left boot and a great goal. Dent, great smother by Scott. Picked up by Fletcher, great skills. He's got merit in the square and Roger the Dodgers got it. So from point blank range, Merritt kicks his third. Big Roger kicked five. The Bears by 109 points. For the first time, Brisbane went to the top of the AFL ladder. The Bears had started the season as 10th favourite for the flag, at odds of around 22 to 1. He's got to shoot at. Distance obviously not a factor. Tries to banana it. Crowd likes it, and so does the goal umpire, I think. Yes, he does. But kick away by Kennedy. Kennedy's kick clears the pack. Holmes misjudges it slightly, might be able to get a hand pass away, he can, but to the opposition that was Ashcroft Fletcher, kicks it on to Voss man of the moment really 
and in more ways than one, down to Sean Hart, 20 metres out, and Hart kicks another one. So Scott then gives the ball across to Voss, they could have raffled it, lucky number was three, gives the ball back to Scott, sets it up here to Lappin, who's a great finisher. His second, some undisciplined uh, talking, let the Bears back in, they've gone up with it from there, Lepic. Akamatis. Gee, that's not a bad shot of a kick. Oh, close to goal of the day, that. Oh, what a kick, what a goal. Over the head of Merritt. Still the Bears come in numbers. Lappin. He can kick a goal. And he does. Yeah, that was a pretty uh, special feeling, um, sitting on top of the ladder. It never really sunk in after the game, but... During the week it did because, you know, commercials and so forth were the Bears on top of the ladder and uh, certainly better than being on the bottom, I can tell you. And, um, you know, Fitzroy were always going to be fairly tough. They're going to come out pumped up and they did to start off with and unfortunately they faded away and we kept on going on with it, which was pleasing. I really thought that if we're going to be a formidable side that we had to beat Fitzroy by, you know, 12 or 13 goals and as it as it uh, turns out that we beat him by more, so, which was quite pleasing and we played well too. We didn't try and, uh, on a, you know, stoop to their level, so to speak. The longest road trip in footy, Brisbane to Perth. This time it would be Fremantle at Subiaco on a day of celebrations. Andrew Buse played his 250th. Richard Champion became the seventh bear to play 100th. Matthew Clark made it 50, and Clark Keating began his senior career. In 1995, the Bears had experimented unsuccessfully with a protracted road trip to play the two Perth-based teams. In 1996, they beat both of them on hit-and-run missions. Might have been a free to Lambert play on, said the umpire. Kennedy. Good kick by Kennedy. Great goal. Kick it through the middle. Forks the hand pass. He probably should have given it. Back to Alan. He misses it. And now a chance for the Bears. Hart was in there. Gives it to Akamanis. And up the front for Jason Akamanis. He's 49 metres out. Up to the goal square. Lepic. And he'll kick an uncontested goal. Chisholm again. Went defensively and lost it. Lambert off the left boot. Not a bad kick. He's kicked the goal. And how many people other than Scott Chisholm would go back into trouble like he does? <laughs> it's amazing what he did area, a couple yeah. of minutes ago. There's Keating firing out a little hand pass. Lapping a long kick. Akamanis again. Yes. No distance out. He's wide out on the angle. Good looking kick. A goal. So a gutsy effort by the Bears. Clawing their way back into this with these late goals. They needed to do it and they have. Wide of the pack, Lambert, here they come again, feeds it wide, Boss, a long kick at the ball, O'Reilly goes back with Clark, and Clark takes a very good grab, reaching over the top. Jones coming, Bandy's fact coming back on now, Drew, with Jones going off. Dying minutes of the first half from point blank range, Clark kicks a goal. Kick by Lappin out wide, and 60 metres out from goal, McRae's got it. Walsh is around Chisholm, McRae centres. Right. Good mark. Magnificent kid, this blood. Well, the goal's coming in runs. This could be the fourth in a row for the Brisbane Bears to get them back to within four points. And he gets it. Second goal to Michael Boss. Lynch plays on. Wide of the mark. Sets it up. Down towards Clark. In front, knocked down by Harding. Roving the pack. It's grabbed by Lambert. Bacon goal square. This will run on. It's a goal. The Bears in front. Ashcroft penetrating kick inside the 50. Clark's in front, almost the mark on his chest. Down behind, picked up by Jones. Good hand pass under the circumstances. Lappin superbly done. Shrugs off a tackle. Deserves a 12-goal unanswered burst beginning short of half-time blew the game apart. The Dockers could manage only three in the second half. 12 players gold. Nigel Lappin took the umpire's votes. Brisbane by 25 points. Top spot retained on percentage from North and Carlton. Going to be a free advantage. And now Dal White lopes down the centre of the ground. Kicked by White the half forward. And the mark is taken by Craig McRae. 
Mitchell going off for the Dockers. And Wills coming back. Allen still on the bench. Kick by McRae. He'll test a man with a groin injury. Oh, hasn't tested him at all. It was a huge effort to go over there and, and win. Uh, Fremantle are a very hard side to beat over there. I mean, they beat Carlton in the following uh, games and um, they always seem to build themselves up in front of their home side and are very dangerous. And It was probably only in the third quarter that we turned it around and got on top of the game. Um, and then eventually we end up taking it away from them. And is it going to be a night that belongs to one Roger Merritt, the Colt from Caniva who came to Windy Hill back in 1978. He played 149 games with Essendon. Only 31 players had passed the 300 game mark. Against Hawthorne at the Gabba under lights, Roger Merritt capped a week of festivities. Akamanis almost held, comes towards Kennedy, he tumbles a putt down towards half forward again, some pushing and shoving, socket off the ground, and there's another one. Hughes has to trap this ball, does sit nicely for him now, and swings around on his left foot and tries to find McRae, tries to control the ball in front of him, slips, it is slippery, there's no doubt the players are having trouble with this ground. It was a quiet game for the 36-year-old, he'd kick only one goal. The rest of the Bears were in party mode. A seven goal second quarter ensured it would be a game the big bloke wouldn't forget in a hurry. In game number 251, Andrew Buse was brilliant. He'd get the three votes. Alistair Lynch, the best of the goal kickers, with six. Clay has had a very good first half indeed. So eight oh, kicks, Lynch. nine kicks, big lead, too high. Oh, Lynch reads it beautifully. From 20 metres out, put it down, fourth goal to Alistair Lynch. No mark, Holland. Straight back towards Lappin. Lappin is 60, Lappin is 50. Lappin's going to have a shot, is he? In towards goal, across the top. This to make the margin 29 points. Voss, distance not a problem. He swings out now. He shoots and I think he's kicked it. Slips but plays on. Heads to that outer side. Buse is having an excellent quarter. Tidying up once more. Flat looking punt kick down towards McRae. Oh, trapped sensationally well. Gives it away to Tristan Lynch. Ball to ground once. The advantage is paid. Lynch can goal here. Goes into the open square. <laughs> White in the box seat. This player's on short. McRae sits and wait. Lynch does beautifully behind to protect him. And has a hot one for his trouble. Brisbane looking for their third. And really a quarter that is going to seal it for them. He makes no mistake. That's great McRae. That is his third goal. Merritt. Darrell White is there. Harford is there. Nigel Lappin. Clever Nigel Lappin. He gets his Afterwards, mascot for the day, Benjamin Merritt, did a lap to celebrate his dad's milestone and the Bears' 63-point win. Hawthorne at this stage were obviously struggling. However, you know, you give Hawthorne a sniff and they can really punish you. Um, they, they thrive on the confidence that if they get near you and um, Roger did have a big week that week. He was inundated with interviews and um, you know television appearances and uh, it was a really huge week and Roger said after the game that it was such a relief. It was obviously a big occasion for the club too as our first 300 game player. Um, <coughs> it played with the Brisbane Bears so it was um, a very important occasion. I think all the players seemed to lifted for that occasion. And Roger, you know, really loved it after the game when he did that lap of honour and it was really good to see his kid out there with uh, Roger running around. The crowd really responds to him. Him and Scott Russell last week. Gee, that's an ordinary hand pass. Really put Williams under pressure. Chance now for Lappin. Lovely little left foot snapshot by... Lappin. In 13 meetings, Brisbane had beaten Collingwood only once here at the Gabba in 1994. With Merritt rested, the top side in the competition started odds on favourite. This time, there would be a slow start, the Pies getting the jump. Patterson, a leading player occasionally against Buse. Normally a great kick for goal, that's no exception. 
He is a good finisher. Out there for Bartlett. Gow has read it well. It was a clever kick, actually. Uh, Fletcher unlucky, then trapped it. Chance for uh, White. Decides not to give it off immediately, then puts his man under pressure. Voss in brilliant touch early. Beautiful handball to Gow's at centre wing. Comes in board. Goes long to full forward. At the back lap and licks beauty from the side. Should go. He's only 35 metres out. Directly in front. Close. Got it. In front on the board, 33 to 17. Buckley, oh, gee. Not a lot of percentage there. Yes, the short kicks in uh, to that uh, defensive. By half time, the Bears led by a goal, and a six goal third term stretched it even further. Voss was in outstanding form. Hindsight shows that his three votes this night had him on 14 for the season after eight games. He gets it down, approaching. Oh! Richardson, that bump was by Voss, and Alan Richardson on his 31st birthday is in a lot of strife. And you were a little bit fortunate there, Chris Scott, at the second grab. He's taken the mark. Hand pass away to Tristan Lynch again, towards full forward, to his namesake, and he's got it. Alistair Lynch has marked only 10 metres out, not even 10 metres out to keep leading hard at the ball for the four quarters is the thing that uh, Lynch has to still be able to do at this point of his comeback. Well, he could give the Bears the lead. He kicks his third and the Bears are in front. Will this break the deadlock? Will Kennedy put Brisbane in front? No, because he's hooked it very badly. What a mark! He is an athlete. Typically, it's his first mark, and this will be his first kick. He is mercurial, there's no question. This to put the Bears in front, late in the opening half. Lynch galloping back towards the square. He's kicked three goals. On the other side of the ledger, Sav Rocker, goalless at this stage. Lappin's kicked to the square, Lynch has got it again. So he's looking ominously dangerous, is Alistair Lynch. He's really brought the, uh, the Bears right back. Lynch for his fourth goal, directly in front, makes no mistake. Legally, to Lappin, having a huge game. Another long run. Directs the kick to full forward and gets to his man. What a play by Lappin. Who's had a quiet night by his own high standards. Only his second kick coming up. Kicks from 48. Does it get there? It's there. Clark uh, starting to dominate, gets high, lays it down, right held on to, no free kick, Lambert will play back to Clark, still with Clark to Fletcher, could give off, does to Voss, Voss centres the ball, Lepich! He's already kicked one goal in this term, Lepich. Got another one. Lynch wanting to give off actually to Scott and now does Scott at half forward this would be a big play off the interchange have a look at that a remarkable goal he's going to kick from about 53 winds himself up oh takes his man on and drills it home Too far to score a goal. Puts it to centre half for Dion Scott, beat everybody. Lepix, left foot, done it. Close, very close, might have. Little kick to the advantage of Lepic. Well, he tried to break the Krasiska tackle. That was maybe a little adventurous, but Daryl White, he's starting now his magical tricks and a lovely little pass. In defence, Richard Champion kept Magpies a Sav Rocker goalless. After eight, the Bears were seven and one. Five wins in a row was a club record. He's now kicked five. Probably the big difference I noticed in that transition from round one to round eight is that uh, we, we had probably 90% of the support, whereas if we played Collingwood in past years, it was 60-40. And um, it was, it's certainly you know, a rapid change in our support base. And, um, that game was, uh, you know, all, almost got away from us. They.
come back at us in the last quarter and we nearly lost it. Uh, it was probably lucky it never went for another two or so minutes because they probably would have pipped us. The lure of a Sydney Brisbane blockbuster at the SCG proved irresistible. 27,000, the biggest to see a Swans match in a decade. Darrell White was a late withdrawal. The plane was late, forcing the team meeting to be abandoned. But all eyes were on the big bloke from Sydney in the number four Guernsey. He'd kick 11. Gowers on the outer side, drives it towards half forward. Roger Merritt up the ground, wheels around, kicks low inside the 50. Fletcher, almost a clever mark. In fact, it's been played. We saw where Hayden Kennedy was, and that was behind Fletcher. It helped, I think. There goes the Fletcher kick. Well, it was a good mark in the circumstances. Sydney by six points. And Marcus Ashcroft drifting it out of the middle. Huskis an effective spoiler. Kennedy an effective hand pass over to Lambert. This could be another quick one. Akamanis in towards goal. Over the top it goes. And Brisbane have the answers. And Lambert scores a tie. Well, somehow manages to pull it back. Hughes has got it, running down towards the attacking 50 for his team. Sets it up for Merritt. He's got plenty of company. Three swans up. They'll pay the price on the ground. Kennedy open goal. Seymour slides in. Kennedy, the man who did the fisting, came in, but not before Cresswell booted it towards the outer side. Missed by Gowers. Opportunity out there for Chapman. Slips it away nicely. O'Rockland goes looking for Lockett and hit him. Down by a point. They lead by five. Now Lappin from 65 metres needs a mark and full forward. Oh, the back, surely a chance to Voss. A much needed goal to Brisbane. Michael Voss gets his first. The Swans were right on target. They kicked 21 6, while the Bears had a game they'd rather forget. The final margin, 58 points, and the loss cost them top spot. <laughs> Sydney really established that they were a very good side, and um, I think they showed that against us, and really blew us off the park in the last quarter. And um, I myself was injured and had to watch it on the sidelines, and it wasn't very good to watch, I can tell you, let alone be out there. So, um, you know, it was disappointing, and no one really played well, no one sort of won in any position. It wasn't until June and round 10 that Brisbane actually played a match in Melbourne. Even then, it was down the Prince's Highway at Geelong. And what a game it was. He's got a panic to move in, Lepich. Inside 50, shocking kick. Or well, was it a good pass? If it was a pass, it was uh, well directed, but of course he led very deep into that pocket. Moves around, kicks it goal. That's not bad, he might have dumped that. He's got it. Good kick, White. Gowers, the former Hawk from 45 metres, kicks it goal and kicks through it. Three goals to the Bears this quarter. Kick number 12 for Voss. Colbert in front, Lambert, underground hand pass to Darrell White. On the boot very, very quickly. McAdam at the back. Uh, Lepich, snap it goal. It bounces and it bounces. Three for a goal. The lead currently at 18 points. Justin Lepich. Slides it across the face. Keating in front. Could have almost been paid against Ackermanis behind. Clark Keating. There's the angle. Just takes a step to his left. And I think he's gone very, very close. He has. His second. And that missed by Gilbert McAdam earlier in this quarter. Now looking pretty costly. When he had a shot at goal from 50. Nepic was the flyer. That's a goal. White. I think it's goal. It is a goal. White's kicked it. Now it's a play on call. Lambert free. Time running out for the Bears, you would reckon. Scott at midfield. Short pass to Lepich, and he's got the mark. <laughs> that last point of Bill Brownless's may prove yes. uh, fairly vital in the end of the day. Two and a quarter minutes, and they've got to kick three scores. That's a funny old kick, but it's a goal just the same. 
hurriedly towards centre half forward. Hall camped underneath it. Gowers in from the side. Dick Foss spills to Scott. The hand pass too tall for Clark, but running onto it. Ashcroft. Here they come again. McIver. He's got this one about 35 metres out. McIver. Tricky cross breeze. Sends it goalward. There's a point the difference. What a kick. What a comeback. What a game. Bounces it quickly, Clark superbly to Foster Scott. Scott has been influential in these dying moments. Floats it inside the 50. Kidding was up, off hands a chance for Lapp, and there's a man on loose, Akamanis. Kennedy didn't spot him. He goes for home, high down towards Lepich. Ten seconds to go, loose ball behind, it's out of bounds. At three-quarter time, the Bears had opened up a four-goal break. With four minutes to go, they trailed by 18 points. An extraordinary turnaround, but more was in store for the 25,000 faithful. At right half forward inside the 50. Boundary throw in, down to seven seconds. Keating thumps it, goal with close to the boundary. Forced across its level. It'll be a draw. It's in the end, it was Justin Lepich who scrambled through a behind. Only the second Bears draw in 207 games. Eight points apiece. Wait for the siren. It's a draw at Cadinia Park. Thriller. And mixed emotions for both coaches. That young man is still ropeable. You know, Geelong were a very tough proposition. Any any side with G Ablett in there is a, is a fairly tough proposition. Um, you know, I think we really showed our character in this game. We were ahead. Unfortunately, we lost the lead and we're 18 points down with, uh, you know, four or five minutes to go and managed to level peg the game, which was a fantastic effort by the guys. Favoured by punters, but it's very tight. Williams couldn't take it. Voss can. Gives it back towards Ashcroft. He's under pressure. Crystal applies it well, but Scott gives it away. Oh, copping one late was Adrian Fletcher. Kicks down towards the forward pocket region. Close to the boundary line. Kept in play by Jason Akamanis. And Lepich takes the mark. See the speed of Akamanis. Fantastic. And what a centre. The two redheads combining. Look at that. Well done. National football best and the bears are away yes, all right, right out the footy fever in brisbane carlton in town the game a sellout a month in advance such was the interest that the seven network went live into brisbane for the first time for bc and the abc radio took the game live despite the build-up the weather let everyone down well, in front of the social club and in fact probably near of 50 meters in fact it's a good kick he's got onto that don Oh, geez, kick the beauty. They try to work this out to Brown. Swings it around his body. Kernahan can't get hold of it. Matthew Kennedy and Gilbert McAdam played their 100th games. In a low-scoring game, Carlton inflicted Brisbane's third defeat by 24 points. Pierce kicks and kicks truly. It was built up to be such a huge game and it was probably um, hurt by the, by the rain that occurred and the sloppy, sloppiness, but... You couldn't doubt the commitment of both sides on that particular night. Unfortunately, Carlton got a, a two or three goal head, head start on us at one stage and we just couldn't peg them back and it just went goal for goal after that. And unfortunately, in wet weather football, if you let a side get, you know, four or five goals ahead, it's going to be a fair task to peg them back and, you know, unfortunately we didn't. Disappointment for both sides, losing key players. Mark not taken there by Craig Turley in his 126th game. And the Bears, well, I'll be hoping they won't be flat after that big game against Carlton. Lovely night in Brisbane. No breeze. And really conditions perfect, unlike last week, as McRae lets one go and kicks a goal. His first. But deep in their attacking zone. Saturday night at the Gabba, and a chance to regroup against the lowly Melbourne. But for poor kicking early, it might have been a rout. Buse comes out wide, Fletcher tries the old one-two, gets up off the ground, terrific stuff. This is exciting now, Fletcher again is creative, another one hits the ground, Kennedy from 50, you think he'd kick it? He will. Oh, he will, they're kicking it on by all the night. two of the two of them featured one here is Keating the others Robbins coming in 
Keating grabs it out of the air and then tries to burst through. Feeds it off to Fletcher. He comes back to Voss. Voss swings the ball around. Going towards the goal. Lynch. Terrific mark on the line. But should be easy meet for Alastair Lynch. Player of quality. Kicks and kicks the Bears fifth. Lappin swings it back in towards Fletcher. He's still a long way from home. It goes towards the 50. And the big man, Keating. Certainly looking for votes tonight is Keating. And he goes long towards Lynch, a test of strength. And it's won by Alistair Lynch. Alistair Clarkson saying something, <laughs> chipping Alistair Lynch there. He's a cheeky fellow, Alistair. Well, Lynch directly in front. This should be his second, and it is. Falls to Akamanis again. He comes out wide. Lynch on the lead. Taps it back over his head. Ball falls to the 50-metre line. Hopgood there. Now McRae onto his right boot. Throws it. Kicks it. Snaps it. A oh, freak goal for McRae. Second goal to Craig McRae. Tingay may be first to this, although it bounces towards McAdam. He does it beautifully to young Ben Robbins. And Robbins is away. Ball to ground once. Has a look down towards the forward line. Up towards centre half forward, towards Lynch, White and Voss. Voss towards goal. What play by one of the great players of the league. Sensational stuff here at the Gabba. Got players streaming off everywhere. Puts it out in front of Lappin. Wobbly old ball. He's got time to pick Melbourne it up. Melbourne kicked three goals in the first quarter, but could manage only three more for the night against a Brisbane defence that was totally dominant. The other end, Craig McRae kicked six, equaling the club record set by Roger Merritt against Melbourne in 1993. The Brisbane Bears by 77 points. Craig McRae had a few injuries with groins and so forth, so it was good that he ran into a bit of form. With that particular game also, we had a lot of people that had the flu, and it was probably a relief that we won it because we had that many people that were crook with it. Russell Mitchell, one of the top fullbacks now, probably still fairly underrated. Punch away comes to Joel Smith, or he could have come to Joel Smith. Kicked away by the Bears, and it's marked by Lynch. Should be the first goal, Lynch from 30 metres. Slight angle. It looks pretty good from here, and he's got it. St Kilda at Waverley can be the toughest trip around if the Saints happen to have their stars alight. So it was on June 29. Stewie Lowe was awesome. He took 14 marks and kicked nine goals. Unstoppable. Beautiful pass to Stewie Lowe. Lowe on quickly, Aussie Jones from 40 metres. Directly in front, good vision by Lowe. Jones directly in front. Robert Harvey, one of the superstars of the competition. Shanahan well down the ground. Should have kicked it better than that, as you would expect. Gowers, the former Hawk, onto Kennedy, onto Lambert. Lambert from midfield, kicks up towards right half forward. The boy from Chilton does well. Lappin, long kick. Lynch again takes the mark. Alistair Lynch for his second. He kicks, and it looks pretty good. He's got it. It's the Bears 13 to St Kilda 6. It's a Stewie! Oh! Oh! oh. Your kick from 20 directly in front. Robert Harvey had 19 hand passes. Nathan Burke, 21 kicks. It was possibly Brisbane's lowest point in the season to date. The goalless last quarter just added to the pain of a 46 point loss. While the Bears recovered, the club was making major steps in another direction. One that might alter its whole future. And he's got it. Never give up. That's Noel Gordon's motto, and he has a new football club to show for it. In little more than 24 hours, the Brisbane president managed to manoeuvre North Melbourne out of the picture and broker a partnership with Fitzroy. He's played 100, 100 games, 120 games for Fitzroy, so that's a very important one of us. That's exactly right, that's right. Last night's stunning coup kept the merger man busy today, a threatened rebellion by former Fitzroy President Dyson Hall Lacey, dealt with by the Bears solicitors. I feel a bit sorry for Dyson. I mean, he's been a hero as far as the Fitzroy Football Club is concerned, and no one should forget that. But I'm not sure he's managed the affairs as well as he might, and I think, in retrospect, he'll probably agree with that. It was then off to his new home to meet the in-laws. I've spoken to a number of ex-Fitzroy players, uh, 
who will take an executive role uh, as it advises to the end of the season. Victorian coach Curly Austin is tipped to lead the Lions for the rest of the season. Michael Noonan to step down tomorrow. Gordon will address the players on Sunday. The big loser in all of this is North Melbourne. For two months, Arden Street was the centre of attention as the deal with Fitzroy was hammered out. Hawthorne power broker Lloyd Williams, who previously mooted a merger with Melbourne, also questioned last night's dramatic turnaround. I wouldn't be optimistic about seeing any Melbourne-based mergers in the short term. But for retiring AFL boss Ross Oakley, the Brisbane Lions are a crowning achievement. I think this is a, a tremendous result for the football competition. Falls to Marty again. Marty again. Yes, terrific kick. Just 48 hours after the formation of the Brisbane Lions, the Bears had a footy match in Adelaide of all places. Nigel Lappin became the Bears' youngest 50 gamer. McRae's quick. Ellen gets back. Hart may get there to support him. Edwards, McRae, Merritt, Hart, Merritt just to shepherding McRae. Good tackle. Forces forward. Lynch should kick a goal. Handball over the top. White's got it. Here's one back. Well done. Merritt using his body. Lambert gets a shove in the back, but it's called play on. Now goes to Ashcroft, starting to win a few 50-50 balls and a white. Great kick. He is a goal kicker, Darrell White. Very good goal. Yes, the momentum really with the Bears. And uh, Don, I know that uh, we were very, very frightful of the Bears halfway through that second, but if Lynch kisses this. It's a very high ball. Back. It has made the distance, and the Bears, unbelievably, are in front. Gets good distance into the centre. This was a strange match. The Bears trailed right into the final term. They managed to snatch the lead, but then just as quickly relinquished it. Two of them take the pick. Vardy again. He kicked a goal in the first quarter. He's been useful all night. We know he's a pretty good kick from what we've seen. He kicks from 45 metres. He's kicked it well. It's close. He's got it. Champion would be fined $2,000 for disputing an umpire's decision. Lynch would be suspended for one match for charging. An eight-point loss was the net result. Uh, we came out of that game, you know, we've got to convert every single opportunity that we get and... Uh, we miss little things like that, turn the ball over at critical stages when we just didn't need to, when we just needed to settle the, settle the game down and uh, we just need to think out that game a little bit better than what we did. Out towards half-back, Ashcroft again, Voss's Shepherd was terrific, goes back to Scott, Scott's got a bit of time now, should be able to deliver, takes his time, back to Lappin, Lappin low, kicks a beauty, good take Fletcher, the Bears deep into attack, Fletcher centering kick out, standing to Merritt, wonderful play by Brisbane, from Lappin to Fletcher to Merritt. Let's see if Merritt can goal, that looks good, that looks good. Ashcroft probably will go long, kicks it high, It'll land near 50. Merritt up high, couldn't take the mark. McAdam, hand pass. Go in and get a goal, Sean Hart. Have another one. You can bounce it and go right to the line and get the goal. Great play by McAdam. With Darrell White, the leading goal scorer on the ground with three. Lambert gets the hand. After one win and one draw in six matches, came the vital clash with Essendon at the Gabba. This would be the fifth sellout crowd for the year. The fans staying with the side en masse after some ordinary performances. A six goal to nil second quarter gave the Bears the jump. They never looked back. White kicked four goals. 50 metres from the Bears goal. In trouble was Doolan. and he got his right foot to it. Not quite far enough. In there is Ashcroft. Ashcroft kicks to the front of the goals. Oh, there's a mark. It's a Bears mark taken by Boss. At the back of Chris Danaher. He's right in front, only 20 metres out. That overhead mark, Billy. I mean, Dan has done fairly well on Voss, but those two or three overhead marks. Voss again in the umpire's mind with three goals. No, he goes in short because Scott is in the middle of the ground. Scott can go long, pump it away. No handball, McAdam in trouble. Back to Scott. Into an open goal goes Chris Scott, and he's kicked the goal. 
Brisbane now lead by 34 points. You know, luckily we got away. There was a particular stage in the third quarter we had to kick a couple of goals into the wind. And we managed to do it and kept Essendon at bay because they were coming at us. Tapped down by Clark again, straight to his feet, his boss. Around the corner goes Michael Voss. This might float out in the fall. Oh, Della White, a ripper. What a brilliant mark. Oh, he can do anything, this guy. Maybe that's what they need to fire them. As Alice doing the ruck work for Footscray, almost thrown away again, there's White. Shocking conditions at the Witten Oval for the match against Footscray. A venue where the Bears had never been successful in eight previous visits. It was so bad that only three goals were scored in the first half. Torre looking for the boundary line, but goes the speedy Ackermanis. A goal here could be a very telling one. It's a great snap from oh. Ackermanis. What a goal. Ackermanis would be the only multiple goal scorer for the game with two. Nigel Lappin in game 52 would get the votes. Brisbane recorded a 14-point win. The Bulldogs score of 3-4-22 was the lowest tally ever recorded against the Bears. Takes the ball to the bottom of the pack. He's starting to work his way into this game in this third term. Over the back was a big fly. I think it was Griffin. De uh, Stephen Wallace it was. Gets the ball forward. But uh, Lynch gets it to Sean Hart who has a shot at goal. It might dribble through for another great goal to Sean Hart of the Brisbane Bears there fourth. You know, we really slogged it out. It wasn't a high scoring match is what you said. But we really, you know, won our first game at the Witten Oval in the, our 10 year history which was quite pleasing. Throwing to take place just in front of our commentary position here, centre wing. In front was uh, the Eagles ruffling in front of Clark, comes down now to Lambert. Lambert round the corner looking for Hart. Gutsy mark coming in front was Sean Hart, who was in pretty good form last week at the Witten Oval. Gets it on to Voss, who with the left foot drives forward for the, e for the first goal to the Brisbane Bears. What a day in Queensland. Brisbane had woken up to watch Kieran Perkins and Susie O'Neill win gold in Atlanta then trek to the Gabba for the game against the Eagles. After waiting nine years to beat the West Coast once, they would do it twice in one year. A 14 goal to five second half did the damage. Akamanis kick six. In game number 300 as coach, Mick Malthouse had no answers for a Brisbane side who were in total command. Fletcher was everywhere. Defence of the Eagles, Lynch coming out to meet the ball. McIntosh keeps his feet. And comes up with a footy, but it's pinched by Lambert. Lambert quickly around to Lappin, who loves kicking them on the left foot. This time goes back onto his right, straight through the middle. The Bears on a roll. Hart, who's been excellent in the forward pocket, takes on David Hart. Sprints away, gets the right handball out to Fletcher. He's looking at the top of the square. Interesting handball, this one. He's got it. Oh. He's kicked it. Well, Ackermanis has kicked a great goal. Now, let's see what can happen here, because the Bears just proving very, very troublesome. They lead by seven points after being down by 25 points at one stage as Voss belts it in, in towards the half-forward area. Oh, great fly! That was by Akamanis. He's paid it. He is, what, 35 metres out? 40 metres out, in fact. Directly in front, Jason Akamanis. And he's kicked the goal. Ashcroft is there. Ryan Turnbull. Lambert had 21 hand passes. Clark, 28 hitouts. Voss kicked four goals. The Bears' final tally of 25-13-163 was the highest kicked against the Eagles in the Malthouse era. Kick three himself, going for his fourth from directly in front. 45 metres from goal is a beautiful kick, and that's right through the middle. Uh, West Coast had won 11 in a row. Um, we didn't want them to win 12, and we really went out there uh, with a purpose and um, you know the crowd really responded to us and it happened to be on the heat of the day but wasn't really any real advantage because Perth has that sort of hot weather too. Um, you know West Coast was such a hard side and once again we played one on one and just tried to go with them and uh, it was an important stage of our, um, of our season too. Um, you know I think we're probably sitting a little bit further back probably about fourth or fifth at this stage. Uh, and we had to sort of win this game to keep in touch with uh, first and second, uh, which we managed to do. Great performance by the little redhead. He'll kick from 55. Looks wide. 
Pack fly, excellent punch from Charles. Only to find Ashcroft now has a chance around the corner. Hooks it. Looks pretty good. This was one of the most remarkable games of the 1996 season. Brisbane and Richmond at Optus Oval, a venue that had seen the Bears successful only twice in 15 visits. Got the leading heart, excellent vision. Sean Hart's got a couple of points under his belt already as he lines up for his first goal. Looks pretty good. I think he's happy with that one. Andy Gow has been a good player, Russ, in the last yeah. four or five weeks. Played very well in the wet at Footscray a couple of weeks ago. Be worthy in the, in the finals with his experience too, Russ. It's hard. Oh, it's good, Ed. Kicks it long to Lynch and eyes on the ball. That's fantastic. Excellent effort. Watch this. Never took his eye off it whatsoever. Got one across the scone. It might have been all over at half time. The Bears kicking four goals from 13 scoring shots. Richmond, the preliminary finalists of 95, kicking none. Very clever all day and it's through for a goal. Ball up by umpire McLaren. Richard Champion did a wonderful job keeping Matthew Richardson goalless. So good a job did he do that umpire Sawyers, Carey and McLaren gave him the three Brownlow votes. It would be a 17 point margin in the end. The Bears 12 and a half wins from 18 games. We were a much more committed bunch than uh, what it was at round three. Uh, even from the start, we seemed to uh, dominate the game. And I, I really didn't think at any stage Richmond had control of the game. And Richard Champion played such a fantastic game on Matthew Richardson. Didn't give him anything. And he ended up getting dragged uh, in the last quarter there. And uh, really showed what such a dominant game that uh, Champs had. So the margin is five points. And this floating breeze is going to make things difficult, as we saw by that kick out. Lepic can go short into half four. That's going to be OK. And Fletcher's going to have a shot. 40 out, almost directly in front. Here's Adrian Fletcher in his 125th game, looking to put the first one on the board for the Brisbane Bears. High kick back towards the wing. Gow is in best position. Hands to it. Couldn't hang on. This is Clark. Back inside the 50. It comes once more. Down towards McIver. There's an opportunity for him on the right foot. Yes. Bounces at goal. But it's good. Throw it in. This is Hart. Across the body. Great snap. It's close. It's a goal. Yeah, that's the question. Anyway, McKernan wins it with the left hand. Pushed out the back, Lappin couldn't take it. Freeborn was there also. Oh, Lappin still going. Did it beautifully in the end. And the Bears fired up now as they push it down towards left half forward. Goal would be handy. Clark gets clear. Does it well for a big man too. Looks down towards full forward. They need a mark. They're not going to get it. But they do have the ending. Oh, 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 and he's done it. Back to up to Sable against the ladder leaders, North Melbourne. But what a depleted lineup. Lynch, Lambert, McRae, Chris Scott, Merritt, Kennedy and Chapman were all out injured or ill. Andrew Buse would join the casualty list, his knee injury forcing him out for the remainder of the season. Darrell White kicked two in a low scoring first half. They took him to 100 goals, the third bear to reach the figure after Merritt and Brad Hardy. And he's got it. Over the white hat. A clean who kicks A kick the difference at three quarter time. Brisbane, through Fletcher and Hart, moved clear in the final turn. The Bears made it 2-0 over the eventual Premiers, and for the first time in the club's history, won three in a row into state. Here's an opportunity for Brisbane if they are going to get a goal. The mark has been taken to tie it up again. 25 metres out. Goal umpire does not move. Under four minutes remaining, and that it is has wobbled through for a goal, Justin Lippich. Spoilt was Danilchenko, waiting down is Fletcher, he's got someone running wide, it's Tristan Lynch, he goes over the top to Keating. Keating will go long and high, in towards half four, they need Lippich to take a mark, he can't, Roberts is there, again sweeps the hand pass wide, maybe not wide enough, Robbins gives it out, the Bears go in, oh, oh. oh this is going to be close, The wind was just howling across the ground and uh, it certainly was an ideal football but we'd played in a few games like that during the year and I really think that helped us out in that particular game. Just over eight minutes left in this first term as Sean Hart 
Kicks a high ball up towards the 50 metre line. Punched backwards by Wharf. Now a chance for Ashcroft. Now to Ackermanis. 40 metres out. Kicks wide off the side of the but into the goal square. Lepic. Directly in front. Easy as you like. Ackermanis going short. Wants Lepic. At the back, Lap and Redder beautifully strolls in and kicks a goal. Successive quarters of eight and ten goals set the Bears for their second biggest total in ten years. The new merger partners were not spared, as Brisbane won its sixth game in a row, a club record. In five weeks, the Bears had enjoyed more wins in Melbourne than they had in the past six years. He's got the goal. It's all the Bears. Ackermanis, too easy, shrugs off his opponent, kicks it up long and towards the goal square. Lepic in front, dragged down by Dent. Now Lepic looking for something clever. Daryl White, something even clever. Keating off to Lepic's excellent play by the Bears. Lepic is first. The Bears ten. This will probably didn't happen. Keating was in sensational form until a foot injury forced him out. He'd missed the rest of the season. More severely than your left your knee is supposed to do. Right? Yeah, he might be right there. Worry getting the goal. Fletcher out of the centre. Kept it low. Found Dion Scott. And Scott can chip over the top. And he's going to, to Akamanis who kicks his second goal. Matthew Primus, one of 14 players, 22 years and younger for the Fitzroy side. There's another youngster for Brisbane, Tristan Lynch. Coming through the centre of the ground. An excellent lead from Dion Scott. Directly in front. A dozen goal kickers contributed to a massive 29 goal haul. According to Voss though, the Bears let too many through. Uh, it was very hard to get ourselves uh, switched on for that particular game. Obviously Fitzroy weren't going that well. Um, and as a result we sort of got shocked into it to play well because Fitzroy came out in the first quarter and really tested us. I think they were only about three or four points behind at quarter time. And, uh, they obviously had a point to prove that they wanted to be at the Brisbane Bears next year and uh, to knock off the Brisbane Bears, their uh, marriage partners, so to speak. And um, It was an important win because uh, Fitzroy were very pumped up and managed to kick a few goals than what we would have liked and played a bit better than what we would have liked. Tristan Lynch is away and go they say. Lynch does, puts them inside 50. Merritt stands there like the rock of Gibraltar. Got a hand to it but that was all. Flicked round the body beautifully by Craig McRae and finally they're on the board. Gives it away to Hart. Hart from 40 metres to McAdam and surely the trout will be broken this quarter. And he'll be anxious to impress tonight as I said earlier. A spot in the finals at stake for him. So McAdam kicks and there's only a point in it. Uh, thankfully no one was seriously hurt. So the Bears are challenging. McAdam flies over the top. Couldn't take the mark. Waiting down is Lepic and they've hit the front. It's taken a while but they're there. Problem. Swings the ball around. Coops comes oh. over the top and takes a very special mark. Plays on quickly. Mitchell sits and waits. Yeah, McAdam comes, he's got it, caught Stop. the play now, caught, puts it into the path of Wills, Andrew Wills running a goal, 30 metres out, keeps running, goes, and has kicked the goal. The Dockers are in front by nine points. Danny Dick Fosco. On any given day or night, Fremantle have the pace and manpower to embarrass, and by golly they did some embarrassing in round 21. The Bears trailed at every change. In the end, it came down to one piece of luck, Call it what you like. 87 seconds left on the clock. Scores level. Enter Sean Hart. Oh, Coop has been the star in the second half. Stolen. Here's a chance now. Champion gives it to Kennedy. Kennedy normally a long kick. They're inside 50. They need a mark. No one is able to take it. Oh! In the front! With win number seven in a row, the Bears were back on top of the ladder and more importantly, were already guaranteed a home final. Very disappointing. We're very extremely lucky to get away with this. Uh, Sean Hart, soccer off the ground, was uh, something to behold. I was standing behind the, the goal, and uh, behind where he kicked it, and the ball actually curved into the goals, which was quite unbelievable. And 
of course the crowd um, has gone sick and uh, I think I was standing on centre wing for two minutes with my hands in the air. I was that happy that it went through and, and it was just a matter of hanging on. It wasn't the most pretty game. Brings it around the other side, Lappin. Ball stops, Gowers with the Shepherd. Lappin's left footer up towards full forward again and the mark is taken by McIver. Kiver kicks and he goes. First blood to the Bears. Curran at centre half back kicks out wide. Kelly in front. Kelly takes the mark. Big cheer for Ned playing his last game for the Magpies. Kicks up towards centre wheel, centre fields. Mark is taken by Paul Sharkey. The hand pass is on. Collingwood, their first real effective thrust forward. Pit from 40 metres. Looks pretty good. Likes it, for many Bears players, the trip to Victoria Park, the home of Collingwood, was a first. For all of them, the trip there in 1996 will stay indelibly etched in their minds. And this to a Collingwood side that lost Monkhorst and Rocker pre-game. A seven-goal final quarter by the Magpies saw Brisbane's winning streak end. A 49-point loss saw them drop to third place. Five to one, three. And what's he done with that? In the lead-up to the first ever final in Brisbane, the cream of Australian football, past and present, gathered at the Princess Theatre in Melbourne for the naming of the All-Australian side. Two Bears would be included. Craig Lambert named First Rover, Michael Voss in the Ford pocket. Many believed Matthew Clark unlucky. He'd led the AFL in hitouts with 405, 56 clear of Jim Steins. Has there been a week like it in Brisbane? Certainly not for Aussie rules. The first Gabba final, scheduled for a Friday night, saw a record crowd of 22,000 on hand for the match against Essendon. Wallace overruns it, Lynch is there for the Bears. Alistair Lynch, he has manufactured a goal for the Bears. Hardwick from for Marcus Ashcroft and Alistair Lynch, it was dual celebrations as they played game number 150 on a night that won't be forgotten. And a top effort there by Clark. His kick is ordinary, but fortunately for the Bears, it slips through to Lappin. Lappin's little hand pass sets it up for Lambert. Lambert's kick is high. Maybe the Bombers from behind. Hardwick couldn't take it. Lepic, snapshot by Lepic. First goal of the last quarter to the Bears. Somerville, down to the front. Voss. Shrugs the Blumfield tackle and then gets the kick away. It'll land about 50 metres from the Bears goal. Harvey up high. Couldn't take the mark. Tries to tap it clear and he does. Out of bounds and a free kick. Well, amazing that you pick one out. They've done it just so much tonight and Harvey's going to be penalised. I wonder whether it was out of bounds deliberate or maybe deemed as a throw, but it's with Darrell White. He's 50 metres from goal. He'll put it into the square. He sets it up for a big fly from behind Wallace. Kicked there by Lepic. Four goals to Justin Lepic. They trail 11-7 to 14 goals, nine. Boundary throw in. Taken by White. Fletcher goes short. Ricochets off Lynch. Has a second go. In the pocket. Tries to build it back. And out of play. Well, what would you have done, Lee? Would you have had a shot if you were Fletcher, 40 metres out, running into goal? Well, yes, I, I think I might have, but I don't know about other players. Uh, but certainly, uh, he set Lynch up, but Lynch wasn't able to control. Free, free, free kick, kick here, sorry, Lee, the chest to jump in. I was out on the fall. Now, Lynch missed one early in the game, in the first quarter from this angle at the other end. Tried a check side on that occasion. He's going the drop punt way. He's kicked it very, very well. They like it behind, he likes it, it's a goal! The kick is well. Sean Hart became the ninth bear to play 100. Brisbane had started brilliantly, but paid dearly for errant kicking and near misses. He goes and the umpire Three posters and two shots out on the fall kept the margin down to 17 points. The match ebbed and flowed from then on. In the last quarter, Brisbane moved 27 points up and then had to withstand a barrage from the Wanganeen-inspired Bombers. Finally, with Brisbane two points ahead, it was left to Wanganeen. 
yourself in glory, son. He kicks to the square. They get back. No mark. Wingardine has hit the post. It's a point the difference. And we've got 17 seconds left. <laughs> this is the most unbelievable climax to a game of footy we've seen for many, many years. 15, 11 to 15, 10. Remember, if the Bombers lose and either Geelong or Hawthorne are successful, they're out of the finals. Barnard pushes forward. Hart, the Bears have won! You know, we had to sort of get our minds back on the job from the previous week, and it just goes to show what a sort of different season of, um, you know, AFL football is. It was such a close game, we went down to the wire and um, we really let Essendon back into the game with 26 points up uh, around about when Lynchy kicked his goal from the sideline which was a real team lifter and unfortunately we got a little bit complacent at that particular stage and thought we had it won and Essendon came back and Essendon like Carlton are a side where if you relax for five or, five or so minutes that they can come back and uh, kick three or four goals and Essendon really showed their class in coming back when they did. Scott in front, Madden wins the tap taken by Ashcroft, tumbles it back inside 50, coming out was Lynch, couldn't take it but he gets the free. So Ellis Lynch will be shooting from 30 metres out. Well Lynch takes the front spot here and does very good body work. Now whether it was an actual holding free kick there I'm not all that sure but I think the, the plus for Alistair Lynch was that he was positioning himself to ensure that Silvani was right out of the contest. Kicked 43 goals for the season. Lynch from 30 metres out. He's kicked it. Sock it off the ground but it's going to be to the Bears advantage. They keep it in play. Ashcroft tumbles apart. Oh! Mark of the day! Well, he's getting married in October and there's an early wedding present. Sensational. Well, I was looking for some more leg speed to assist him at ground level, but it, he doesn't need it. He's able to do it in the air as well. A, a great jump there from McRae. Directly in front, 25 metres out. He's already booted one. He's getting married on the 6th of October, and now he's booted two. Ashcroft got Whitehead, Clark got the hand. Many regard Brisbane's win over Carlton in the semi-final at the Gabba as the club's greatest win. Who could argue? The team that put Brisbane out of the 95 finals race at the MCG a year earlier were absolutely and totally thrashed. Lambert trying to set it up to Fletcher. Here come the Bears once more. Out of the centre square, goes short. Lynch has got it. Great play, Brisbane. Milhanna didn't come into this Carlton side, sitting on the bench. Just some great users of the ball coming out of the midfield here for the Bears. We saw McRae do it previously. Now Fletcher steps up. Well, he's kicked one goal, Alistair Lynch. 40 metres out. And he kicks it. Another one towards Akamanis. He gets the hand pass down to Ashcroft. Ashcroft a spearing pass. It's beautiful to Lepich. So Brisbane here has a chance to stop this incredible run by Carlton. I wouldn't be surprised if Stephen Kernahan may not have been reported in uh, the last few moments on a bit of a late tackle. He looks a little bit disappointed. Umpire. Uh, Brett Allen went up and spoke to him. Well, let's have a look at Lepic in the meantime. Directly in front, 45 metres out, and he's kicked a very important goal. Carlton booted four unanswered goals. This is Michael Voss. He goes bang with a bomb. He's just come onto the ground, but Alistair Lynch is going to have a shot. He kicked two goals in the first quarter, and they are threatening to rip this game and blow it apart, KB. It was a very poor kick from Kudafidis. Really put Hamill under the hammer, really set him up, and there was two other Bear players 
at ground level, so it was three against one. Lynch has booted two. 40 metres out. Oh, they're on a roll here at the Gabba. Well, some very thin pickings just at the moment for Carlton. They're really struggling to find a player who's on top of his direct opponent. Two behinds they've managed this term. McKay, Voss is in trouble. Voss is in trouble as Murphy heads for home. He's in real trouble behind play. Now, this could be a very, very dramatic moment. Sean Hart, he's also been a star. 13 kicks, and he flies away up towards full forward. Merriton Lynch, big Roger. Play on, Dodger. No, From the 13-minute mark of the second quarter, the Blues knew their season was coming to a humiliating end. 20 goals to three ended an eight-game losing streak against Carlton, dating back to 1991. The final scoreline saw Brisbane 26-14, 170, a semi-final record. The margin, 97 points. For Alistair Lynch, his seven goals took him past 50 for the season. The smaller brigade have been dynamic, White has been dynamic, Lynch is at the back for another one. They're just sailing along. Ascroft, it's been great all night. Screws it around the corner. Pushing and shoving there with Sexton against Lynch. And Lynch has got the free kick. From directly in front. He drills it. Seven goals to Alistair Lynch. But they were lowlights. Clark was injured. Akamanis was injured. And Michael Voss was too. The week leading up to the following, uh, to the North Melbourne was certainly fairly hectic, obviously. I was injured and uh, Matthew Clark and Jason Ackermanis were injured so there was a lot of uh, doubt going into the following week. Um, that was probably a bit of a damper on the win but um, you know I think the side really established themselves as one of the quality sides in the AFL on this particular game. Uh, you never give Carlton a chance because they are a champion side and if you give sides like Carlton a, a go then um, they'll run right over the top of you. For Voss and Ackermanis, the next week was spent in a hyperbaric chamber in Sydney. Voss hoping for a miracle with his injured ankle. Ackermanis likewise for his hamstring. Uh, to think we were two hours uh, away from playing a grand final is uh, really disappointing. The players gave their all for the season. You could really see in some of the players' eyes that they'd really had enough football and you know, that they, they'd played so much football that they were just exhausted and it really showed. Two days later, Michael Voss was back in the spotlight at the World Congress Centre for the counting of votes in the Charles Brownlow Medal. For the first time, a Brisbane player would take football's most time-honoured individual award. He would poll 21 votes to tie with James Hurd of Essendon and the ineligible Corey McKernan of North. Well, who wants to go first? Congratulations. <laughs> Neither of you done that on the footy field before. Michael, I know um, that your mum and dad are in uh, Brisbane right now at the Gabba. Uh, Gary and said, I don't think you've seen them since Saturday, am I right in saying that? Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. Got a few words for them and for the people in Brisbane right now? Uh, just the people back in Brisbane. Um, oh, it's a fantastic feeling. Uh, mum and dad. I hope you don't get two Polacks tonight. <laughs> what about for both of you? Because you're, you're a favourite, James, and Michael, you were second favourite coming in tonight. Did you come here tonight with high expectations? Uh, no, I thought it was a bit of a jinx, actually. Um, but I, I, I sort of came here without the expectation to win. I didn't want to get dis disappointed if I lost. And um, I'll tell you what, I've never had the worst three minutes in my entire life. And that last round, went, it was unbelievable. It was a fitting end to a year that put Brisbane to the forefront of Australian football. What do we say when we run out to play, dare to feed the bear? What do we say when we're on our way, dare to feed the bear? We're hot! We're hot. We're